with more games getting added ray tracing support and with DX12 Ultimate just around the corner which is supposed to open up a new world of image fidelity, building a gaming PC that can do ray tracing in 2020 is in my opinion a pretty good idea especially if you want to build something that can last you a few years and you don't want to have to worry about you know whether your PC will be able to meet future games requirements. Having a PC that supports DX12 Ultimate is not a bad idea given that the new consoles PS5 and Xbox Series X both support this new API will also motivate game developers to include ray tracing in future games as a result of that. So guys this is my recommendation. Is this the best gaming PC under $1000 in 2020? Well I tell you I've spent hours trying to build what I think is the best $1000 gaming PC that you can buy right now. It's great value and it's quite future proof and it will perform excellent regardless what game you would throw at it. And and yeah, even upcoming Crisis Remaster. Stay tuned. Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Robin. Welcome to Arbin Hardware. I'm a Swedish host and friend with terrible posture and poor accent. Now, in case you want to jump directly to the benchmark, you find timestamp down in the video description. Down there, you also find links to where you can find all these PC parts. Now, I decided to make two config for you guys where the difference being the graphics card. Now, the main difference you notice with the more expensive config is a few more FPS and more specifically we're talking about 8 to 10 more FPS on average but you do also get 2 more gigabyte worth of graphics memory which can especially be important if your monitors support resolutions beyond 1080p let's say 1440p or perhaps ultra wide in those cases 8 gigs of VRAM is what I would recommend for you in the end it comes down to your budget and I would argue that the RTX 2060 Super is currently the best budget ray tracing enabled graphics card that you can pick up right now. And if you're okay of overclocking your 2060 Super card a bit, you can expect to see near RTX 2070 Super stock performance, so essentially more performance for free. Just to be clear, that goes for the base RTX 2060 as well. Overclock it a bit and you will see close to stock RTX 2060 Super performance. Now speaking of the GPU, let's take a greater look at the Super card. So this particular model I shows comes from Asus, it is called Dual, and as the name hints it's got a dual axial fan design blowing on a dense heatsink making the card take up a two and a half PCIe slots. Now what's cool here and what I find important and what made me choose this particular card is that the fans won't spin at all if the temperature stays below a certain degree making the card completely silent. So one question I see a lot what is the deal with the super cards? So one of the biggest upgrade Nvidia made with the 2060 super was adding two more gigs of VRAM given the card 8 gigs effectively which can be particularly important when gaming above 1080 or full HD and this is where VRAM shortage can be a common problem. Now looking at the specs there is also a difference in CUDA cores, RT and Tensor cores and clock speeds ultimately gives the supercard 8 to 10 more FPS compared to its slower sibling. Now this card comes in at just over $400 and if it's a bit over your budget opting for the base RTX 2060 would be my recommendation. Recommendation. As for the base RTX 2060, I highly recommend the 2060 KO, which stands for knockout. And according to VDA, to any contender willing to step in, VDA will respond with a one two punch. Now, what's cool about this card is that they have managed to put a pretty nice cooler on the TU106 GPU and made it very affordable. And currently, this is selling for $299, US dollars, making it one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, RTX available card on the the market. Now guys as you know I'm sitting in Sweden. I've tried to find this card but unfortunately I've been able to find this card at my local store. But based on the reviews of this card online this is definitely worth its attention. Now to give you guys a much better idea you know the actual performance and difference in frames per second in games I decided to include both cards for the benchmark section and again you find both cards listed down below. With that said let's take a look at the processor coming in at $172 this is AMD's 30 and Ryzen, the R5 3600, based on TSMC 700 meter process, got 6 cores and 12 threads. And why I picked the 3600 is mainly because of two reasons. Number one, it is a brilliant CPU. It has also dropped in price quite a lot over its lifespan, from a launching MSRP of 200 down to now $172. It's got 6 cores with SMT, with high enough IPC and clock speed to never be 
become a bottleneck for our system and unless you got a bigger budget to opt for the more powerful 8 core uh, 3700X, this 6 core processor will do the magic for us, no problem. Having hyperthreading has not just shown having a positive impact on the frame rate, it can actually boost quite a lot in many applications outside gaming. The 3600 also got quite high clock speed which is important for gaming as well and overall even though this CPU plays an important role in the gaming PC space, it is typically not as important as the graphics card, therefore we can save a bit of money here to then spend it on a more powerful graphics card. Last but not least, the 3600 also comes with a cooler and it's actually a pretty good one, so that's a good thing we don't have to think about that. Despite that, I decided to throw on an RTX latest 34 Duo eSport cooler and this is a very affordable CPU cooler and if you have a few more dollars to spend, this is the cooler I would pick. Now pricing is something that we care about for this build and you can save lots of money on the motherboard if you're not really interested in doing you know heavy overclocking, run dual graphics cards or having you know additional SATA and USB ports and typically there is no reason shelling out hundreds of dollars on the motherboard. The truth is a budget friendly motherboard will give you the same gaming experience anyway. So to keep the pricing down while not sacrificing you know any essential stuff you can get away pretty cheap here. For this build I decided to go with Aura's B450 coming in at $130. It got support for dual channel DDR4, the latest at a standard. We got dual M.2 slots, gigabit ethernet with AC, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, plenty of USB 3 ports and it even supports USB 3.1 Gen 2. The motherboard you choose will typically not impact the number of frames and your gaming experience in general and for most people out there you're not going to miss any of these you know extra features but obviously you might care for those things anyway this is something you want to have in mind now as for ram i went with this dual 8 key kit from ballistic and although this is some bdi memory sticks as far as i'm aware which are known for being particularly good with ryzen i am still able to overclock this a bit anyway as it seems right now amazon is having a shortage of these memories and therefore i recommend picking up the vengeance lpx from corsair and same story here highly recommend this very stable and not too pricey either. Now jumping over to the SSD, I decided to pick up this 960 gig drive from Kingston. It is cheap and fast and keep in mind in case you're planning on having many games installed, I actually recommend opting for 2TB but 1TB will get you pretty far as a start. Now as for the power supply, I went with this 650 watt unit from Corsair, it's got 80 plus bronze efficiency and it's got that extra headroom in case you want to upgrade the system with the beefy graphics card later down the road. It is also CMI modular meaning that you won't have to deal with you know heaps of cables you don't have any use for. This will make cable management and cable routing so much easier when installing this in a PC case. And speaking of the case, I've talked about this case in videos in the past and in my 15 years of building uh, PCs I actually never stumbled across anything like this before in my life and guarantee you guys Lee and Lee is losing money on this chassis. Anyway it's called Lancool 2. Apparently it's born to perform, it is powerful and it's multifunctional and it's well crafted and normally you would take these words with a grain of salt especially when you see the words presented on screen like this. In all seriousness this case delivers on everything it promises and it over delivers and for $95 you get tempered glass and hinges on two sides and to open up the panels you first open up the side shrouds and everything is held in place by strong magnets and by the way pretty much every part of this case is made of aluminum too and because both sides uses tempered glass windows Lee and Lee uses cover plates to get rid of the visible cables and I gotta be honest I didn't spend too much time here but look at the results the front also got some well needed RGB treatment and the case even comes included with three 120 fans running in 1300 rpm so you want to connect these to your motherboard and you want to make fan curves for them so uh, the, otherwise they will get pretty noisy anyway every air intake also got dust filters and the case got support for up to a 360 radiator in the front and a 240 radiator in the top i've actually used this case in a pc build before and i didn't initially plan to use it again but because it's so good i had to make another video on it guys i'm telling you it doesn't get much better than this the case comes in black and white and again it will cost you 95 bucks which is a steal and it fits this build just perfectly 
Alright, so time to see how this PC performs in games. So I decided to run tests in both 1080p and 1440p. And again, if you're sitting there and you're wondering, should I get the base uh, RTX 2060 or the 2060 Super? Well, first and foremost, I think that comes down to the monitor and the resolution you're playing on. If you got a 1080p monitor, you should get the base 2060. And if you're sitting on anything above 1080p, you should simply pick the Super card. But yes, there is a performance difference here as well and you will get high gaming performance with the super card but in some cases the difference is not as big as you might think but when we start shifting focus to 4040p gaming the two extra gigabytes of vram comes into play pretty quickly and suddenly the performance difference get a whole lot wider and the 2060 super actually pushes into rtx 2070 gaming territory hence why we don't see the 2070 so often any longer anyway guys as i said i made two bits builds for you guys or configs and both are priced around $1000 and you'll find links to all parts down in the video description below. And in case you're on the hunt for a new monitor, I actually made a video going over some of the most affordable ones to consider and you'll find a video down in the link below. In case you got any questions, I'm happy to help you out. Now watch these two videos and I will see you guys in the next one.